Hey guys, I'm AJ George and I'll be your unit coordinator for contract B this term, term 2, 2017. And uh, I just wanted to take the time to say hello, this is me. And uh, please feel free to contact me whenever you need to. My details are below. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, I graduated from Bond University way back in the 90s, a very long time ago. Uh, worked in a few large Brisbane law firms and decided that it wasn't really for me, so ran off to London to do a Master of Laws. Uh, when I came back, I decided to start teaching. And um, I taught at UQ for many years. Um, in fact, teaching contract B because I love it. Um, I also did a PhD at that time and was a consultant in another largish Brisbane law firm. So I've got a bit of a mix of practical and academic um, background in my CV. Um, after I worked at UQ, I, I went to QUT and now I find myself at the wonderful CQU with you guys. I have three kids. Roland Lawyer Style. <laughs> lawyer Style. And I've just moved house, so wow, um, looks cleaner than I thought it would. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to say a few things about this term and some administrative stuff that might help you get through uh, a little more effectively, perhaps, uh, than you otherwise might. <clears throat> Firstly, in terms of the textbooks that you are required to have, you should already have these. I would be very surprised if you didn't. Uh, from Contract Law A, so we are looking at the uh, Wilmot Christensen Butler Dixon text. Um, <clears throat> it is a 2013 text, but I have uh, had a look into it. There's no more recent editions of that text. So, and contract law, as you will work out, will have worked out from um, contract law. A moves kind of glacially along. There's really not many uh, recent developments. But if there are some recent developments that you need to know about during the course of the term, I will certainly let you know. So, do organise the text if you haven't already done so. In terms of assessment, and I can see everyone's ears pricking up, um, firstly, you will need to do a written problem solving assessment. I'll design two problem questions for you, 750 words each question with a total obviously of 1500 words for that assessment. It'll be due on the 7th of August. Uh, the second assessment will be a video presentation of some oral submissions on a contract law question. Um, I will give you detailed instructions in relation to that assessment because uh, you'll need to know a fair bit about that, obviously. Um, so I will post up those instructions on Moodle by week one for you. That assessment is due on the 11th of September and your final assessment for this unit will be a take-home paper and uh, that will be released on a Friday and uh, will be due several days later on the 9th of October. Okay, so that is your assessment requirements for this term. You might note, and I'm not quite sure whether there will be a disparity, but the unit profile should state that all of those assessments are due on the dates that I've told you um, at 5 p.m. Uh, there was a mistake in um, some of the study guides, weekly study guides, I think the first for week one. Um, some of those did say 3 p.m., but you should note that you do actually have until 5 p.m. Uh, consistently with the unit profile. So just make a note in the week one study guide if you need to. If it says 3 p.m., it should actually be 5 p.m. In terms of reading, um, look, you've probably worked out from contract A that... Um, you know, there is a lot to get through uh, during the course of the term. 
However, and I'm sure that all of your other unit coordinators say this, but particularly for contract B, because we are dealing with more complex concepts than perhaps you were looking at in contract A, you can't really get by just using the study guide um, as your way through this particular unit. Uh, you just won't make it. The concepts that you need to get your head around uh, do require some, some real um, analysis and some you know, detailed readings. And uh, yeah, you just can't get that with you know, a, a 14, 15 page study guide. Um, particularly, and I will say this, there will be um, at least one theory question on the end of term take home paper and if you are going to answer that question or those questions successfully to the degree of complexity and, and with the correct analysis uh, that you will need to get a significant grade for your end of term paper, then obviously you'll need to have um, gotten yourself across the readings so that you, you are you know, up to date with the theoretical components of contract law B. The way I would suggest that you go about your weekly tasks, um, I'm sure you've learned this already, but if you haven't, um, use the study guides uh, as, as your first point of contact, okay? they The study guides have been designed by Anthony Marinac. They're very approachable, very chatty, um, fairly concise. And uh, they do give you a bird's eye picture of that week's readings, okay? Um, <clears throat> and then I would engage with the text. That will flesh out for you uh, more of the conceptual and theoretical notions that you're going to have to get across, uh, as I said, to, to do well in your end of term paper. Finally, you will find in the study guides each week a list of the essential cases that you will need to read for each week. And yes, you will actually need to read them from the case book. It's not sufficient that you just pick up bits and pieces from the study guides and from the text. Um, there are some extracts in the text, but what you actually need to do is get into that case casebook and read the prescribed cases for each week. That will then put the kind of cherry on top, if you will, of your readings for that particular week. And at that point, you should be pretty much across everything that you need to be across um, to then launch into your tutorial preparation. The tutorial preparations are not onerous. They're generally speaking little um, animated software um, cartoons that were designed by Anthony. Um, you get to watch one of those and then answer the tutorial questions that are posed for you in the study guide. Uh, I don't anticipate that you'll have a problem with those. Um, however, they are essential and it has been found through, um, you know, educational research that part of what really cements your learning in your brain, what really gets it deep in there, is actually not just feeding your brain, reading, 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 but actually doing, having to analyse, having to sort through what you know and having to put it in order so that you can answer questions. And to that end, uh, I think it's very, very wise if you go through the review questions that are in the study guides each week. I would do them religiously. They're not hard. They're multiple choice questions. Um, I would definitely do those to test your reading, to test your knowledge uh, at the end of each of the sections of the study guide. Okay, so have a look at those. For those that want more, and believe you me, the, the tutorial preparation, like I said, is not significant for um, you know a, a B type subject like this. So I would um, anticipate that I will be releasing some further questions for you to look at um, on the Moodle site each week. Um, and I will give you some more information about that in week one. But I do think it's really important for you 
to not just feed your brain with the readings but also each week after you've done those readings to get that knowledge out and get it onto some paper so that it really cements, really sticks in there. Okay, so that's your reading. Um, what I will say, there's a couple of very practical things that I need to raise with you. <clears throat> Most of the week's readings are about nah, somewhere between 30 and 60 odd pages um, of the text I'm talking about. So you're going to be looking at about somewhere between 10 and, 10 and 15 pages of the study guide plus about phew, between 30 and 60 pages of the text plus your cases, okay? So that's, that's your reading load for the week. Um, it's actually not really significant, as I said, for a, a B-type subject. But what I will flag for you is that misrepresentation, uh, which we deal with in week two, is uh, a very big subject. Um, that particular week's readings just from the text are about 96 odd pages. So what I'm happy for you to do is to spread your readings for that misrepresentation week, the, the week two readings. I'm happy for you to spread those between week two and week three because week three, which is um, equitable estoppel, um, it's not a significant uh, reading load. I think the text is only about 30 odd pages. So I'm more than happy for you to, you know, do about 60 odd pages in week two and then finish off the other 30 odd pages in week three at the same time that you are reading your promissory estoppel uh, and equitable estoppel uh, readings. So that's how I would suggest you break up the week two readings. Um, you should still be able to answer the tube problem. I've had a look at it uh, for the week two tutorial, so uh, it should all work. But certainly if you have any questions about your misrepresentation readings, uh, we can briefly revisit that in the week three tutorial before we move on to look at equitable estoppel in that tutorial. Uh, another thing with your readings. I don't know how you really worked it in contract A, but I am more than happy for you to um, get to the end of the chapter. You will note that in most chapters there is um, a few sections, sometimes five, sometimes more pages, um, entitled International Perspectives, <clears throat> like I said, in most chapters of the text. I, I'm happy for you to treat this part of the weekly readings as optional only, okay? We will um, devote an entire week uh, at the end of term, I think it's week 11, to inter co international contracting, international perspectives. So you're not going to be missing out on looking at cross-jurisdictional issues, um, but I do think that it's really super important for you all to have a um, very solid grounding in the con concepts that we cover uh, during the term first before you then attempt to augment that reading with cross-jurisdictional um, investigations. So, um, look, by the time you finished uh, most of the chapters each week, I'm sure that you will have that particular week's uh, concepts firmly in your mind. If you wish to go on and have a look at the International per Perspectives section, at the end of those chapters, go ahead. If not, you can leave that to week 11. Uh, the Zoom tutorials for this term um, are 6 to 7 p.m. on Tuesdays. It will probably take us a couple of weeks to work out how long it will generally take us to go through each of the tutorials that have been designed by Anthony. But um, I'm anticipating that it would be a good idea if we spent the first part of each of our Zoom, Zoom tutorials um, just recapping on that week's readings, going through some of the crucial elements that have been raised by the text, going through perhaps some of the more curly issues, and there's a lot of them in contract B, probably more so uh, than contract A, as I said before, so that everyone's on the same page uh, conceptually before we go ahead and try and unpack the tube problem for that week. Um, now, if we do do that and you like it, 
uh, we'll keep going in that format. If you'd rather just cut to the chase and we go straight into unpacking the tube problem for that week, I'm happy to do that as well. What we might do is just see how we go for the first few weeks and then we will uh, have a poll or discuss it uh, then and decide the way to go. But I certainly think it's probably worthwhile spending a little bit of time at the beginning of each of the Zoom sessions just to recap to make sure everyone understands the readings for that week. Now, if, it, if we do um, get people pretty interested in the, the recap part of the Zoom sessions and they do go on a little bit, you might have to be prepared that the Zoom session might go a bit beyond 7 p.m. If it stretches to 7.30, um, that may be a possibility. But uh, if we do want to do a decent recap at the start of each shoot, uh, that's you know probably just the way things will go. <clears throat> like I said, we can always just try it for a couple of weeks, see how we go, and then uh, revisit the issue in about week three. Um, that's about all that I needed to tell you administratively about Contract B. Um, it is a fun little unit, I think, anyway. Uh, a little bit more so than Contract A. We have some fairly dry and dusty concepts that you're going to kind of grind through. Now we get to the fun bit and we have all sorts of wild and wacky cases that should hopefully keep you all entertained so on that note i'll say bye for now and um, if you do want to contact me i did give you the details earlier but they are also in the week one study guide so shoot me an email catch up with me on twitter and hopefully we'll have a great term <coughs> thanks guys bye